Welcome back. I'm attorney Thomas Burton, and today's topic is how to transfer a house with a mortgage into a revocable living trust or into a trust. So I see this topic come up frequently in my estate planning practice. I'm an estate planning and asset protection attorney here in Wisconsin. And the big question I often get asked is, can I put my home into a trust if I still have a mortgage on the property? So some people do their trust planning and they have the primary home, usually their residence paid off, but many people don't have it paid off at the time we're doing their trust planning. And they're concerned about if we put the home into the trust, will it trigger the due on sale clause that's contained in many mortgage provisions? So the due on sale clause generally says if you sell the property to someone else, transfer title, you got to pay off the bank that you uh, got the money from, that you loaned the money from, and you pay them off and the new buyer has to get a new mortgage. So in these contracts, these mortgages for the home, there's these due on sale clause provisions. And people are rightly concerned about triggering this, especially on the personal residence, the home. Now the good news is there is a law, a federal law, that allows you to place your home into a revocable living trust, a living trust, or a living trust. The most common type of trust we use for estate planning is a revocable living trust, what we call a will substitute. We're avoiding uh, probate and using the trust as our main method for transferring assets instead of a will. But then when we set up the trust, we generally retitle real estate into the name of the trust. So the good news is there's a federal law which allows you to do this without triggering the due on sale provision, and that's called the Garn St. Germain Act. So forgive my art skills here. I'm not an art major, but here's the general schematic. We have your house, you set up your living trust, and then we're going to deed the home into the living trust. The deed, which you record with the register of deeds, is how you actually change title to the home into the name of your new revocable living trust. And a lot of times we'll do this with a quick claim deed. If you own the home, you will quick claim the deed from yourself to your living trust. But it's the Gar Garn St. Germain Act 12 U.S.C. 1701 J sub 3, which is a federal law prohibiting lenders from calling the loan due on sale when you transfer it into a trust for estate planning purposes. So I have here the Garn St. Germain Act, 12 U.S.C., and you'll see the various provisions, but I'm just going to read you a few pieces applicable. And it applies to any state, and the term state means any state of the United States, the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Guam, and the Northern Mariana Islands, American Samoa, and the Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands. So if you have a home or a mortgage in these properties, this is where it applies in these uh, locations, I should say. Then we go to subsection D, exemption of specified transfers with respect to a real property loan secured by a lien on residential real property containing less than five dwelling units. So it works for a property with less than five dwelling units, including a lien on the stock allocated to a dwelling unit in a cooperative housing corporation or on a residential manufactured home. A lender may not exercise its option pursuant to a due on sale clause upon, and then it lists these nine situations where it can exercise the due on sale clause. Now I highlighted number five here, a transfer to a relative resulting from the death of a borrower. So if it's a death and the property transfers and the new relative has it subject to the mortgage, they can't trigger the due on sale clause. So that's one instance this could come up in estate planning. But the other is number eight here, which we're going to zero in on. A transfer into an inter vivos trust. And the term inter vivos means inter vivos is Latin 
comes from the Latin. It means a trust you made during life, which a revocable living trust you set up during life by definition meets that because you set it up during life, not a trust that came into being after your death, such as a trust set up through a will or something like that. So that's where we get the living part of living trust. It means you set it up during your life. A transfer into an inter vivos trust which the borrower is and remains a beneficiary and which does not relate to a transfer of rights of occupancy in the property. So that's the key there. You have to remain a beneficiary of this trust and it has to be an inter vivos trust where the person who took out the loan, the borrower, remains a beneficiary and does not transfer rights of occupancy to the property. So, looking at this, I sketched out the highlights here on 12 U.S.C. 1701J sub 3D8. So if you want to look it up, Google that or Garn St. Germain Act. And then go to subsection 8. Transfer to an inter vivos trust where the borrower remains a beneficiary and does not relate to transfer of occupancy rights in the property. Now, most revocable living trusts, if you're the beneficiary and you live in the house, that's going to be just fine. So the most common situation with a revocable living trust, we set it up. And if you're alive and in good health, you're often the initial creator of the trust, what we call the grantor, and the initial trustee. You manage the trust. And then if we transfer your home into the trust, as shown here, by deed, you remain living there, and the home remains inside the living trust. They cannot trigger that due on sale clause under the Garn St. Germain Act. So I know there's a lot to unpack here, but hopefully this is hopefully this is helpful to you in thinking about doing your own estate planning. And some folks have a concern. They've been very diligent. They read their loan documents, and they know there's that due on sale clause. And the good news is. This is totally acceptable and quite common in estate planning to put a home into a revocable living trust for estate planning purposes. So talk with your attorney in the state where you live to verify, but this is a federal law, so it applies to all the states today, but talk about your situation with them before you proceed, and if you fall into some other unique situation with your trust and the way the loan's set up, just discuss it with them before you proceed. But I wanted to let you know today it's very common to put a mortgage property into a revocable living trust. And thankfully, this federal law prohibits lenders from saying, triggering the due on sale clause for the trust. Now, in some instances, many people later, some people later in life have the house paid off, and that's great. Then there's nothing to worry about here. There's no lender on the mortgage to even try to bring up this due on sale clause. If they did bring it up, you bring up the Garn St. Germain Act, which allows it. The only issue to watch out here is if you need to refinance the home, some lenders will make you take the house out of the trust to get the new loan and then put it back in. So it would be that, but this is not, this is like an annoying extra step to take, but in my opinion, it shouldn't be a deal breaker to stop you from doing estate planning. And this varies lender to lender. Not all of them require that. But if you discuss this with them, they might not require it. But if you did have to do that, if it's worth the refinancing, all you have to do is as trustee, you deed it back to your individual name, do the refinancing, and then quick claim it back into the living trust. And in Wisconsin, the recording fee on that deed is $30. So it's not a terrible amount of money if you have to do it. If it's worth it to you to get the refinancing on the home, then it's worth likely worth it to do. Run the numbers in your own situation. So keep in mind, Garn St. Germain Act in the 1980s. This is what allows you to put a house or a home with a mortgage into a revocable living trust. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, consider giving it a like so that other people can find and benefit from this information as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.